I'm Andy McNeil, host of the Puck Portfolio, Canada Sports Betting's Hockey and Sports Betting Podcast. I'll be here weekdays at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcast to provide NHL projections, betting advice, and strategies to help you make informed bets throughout the NHL season. Please, if you have not already, like the video, subscribe to the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel. We're just less than 20 subscribers away from hitting that 1,000 subscriber milestone. It's only week two of the NHL regular season, so you guys are helping out a ton. I really appreciate it. Uh, keep it up. Let's go. Also, if you're thinking about signing up for one of the many sports books that are available to Canadians, please check out CanadaSportsBetting.ca. You'll find sportsbook reviews and offers to you know help inform your decisions when choosing which sports book um, to deposit into. And, and if you're going to, you know, really you think about signing up for multiple accounts because it's the best way uh, to, to shop around and line shop. So you can split things up and, and, and divvy it up uh, to different accounts. That's, that's always an option and probably the best option. Um, you know, when you're just getting started, because the best way to find good bets is to be able to line shop and to find uh, different odds at different sports books. So I definitely want to promote that uh, on this show as much as possible um, while I can. And, uh, and hopefully will everybody will get that, that message. So, uh, Anyway, the link is in the description for that. If you want to check out CanadaSportsBetting.ca, please do. Detroit's win over the Penguins. Very happy about that. It was a small bet, but uh, I got the win nonetheless. Plus 114, half unit. Uh, won almost 0 0.6 units on that one. That was it for me on Wednesday. Thankfully, I stay away from the Capitals at those big odds. Uh, man, they look bad. Uh, Ottawa looks freaking great, though. And I've updated my projected NHL standings. And I haven't had a, a whole lot of time to mull over over uh, those projected standings but one thing that jumps out is the senators so here's a look at everything feel free to take a screenshot look over this a little bit later i won't spend a, a ton of time here so ottawa i had projected them to finish with around 94 average points and make the playoffs 48 percent of the time that was prior to the season however They've gotten out to a 3 and one start. They look great. Their playoff odds have jumped to 59%, and they're now expected to finish with 96 average points. Uh, so feel free, like I said, to take a screenshot. I'm going to move on uh, to the schedule here. Schedule breakdown for Thursday and Friday, October 19th, uh, October 20th. We won't spend a lot of time here either because... We were on this yesterday. We looked ahead like we always do to Thursday's games and Friday's games for that matter. Uh, and we, we've broken this down. So you'll see that some teams uh, have more rest than others. That's a, a good rule of thumb. Don't blindly bet against tired teams or anything like that. But, um, you know, a good rule of thumb is that the, the team with more rest has has a bit of an advantage. Rest is a weapon in the NHL, of course. Um, I think too much rest can lead to rust, uh, obviously, and that's something to be cognizant of too. So uh, two, three days rest, that's usually the sweet spot. Anything more than that, you kind of start to worry uh, about rust. So four or five days off, anything more than that, and uh, and things start to get a little bit dicey uh, in terms of estimating just what kind of effect that will have on the team. But as you can see, the Coyotes playing their third game in four nights, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning playing their fourth game in six nights, Carolina fourth game in six nights, and the Calgary Flames, uh, they're on the second half of a back-to-back -back on Friday. So Thursday's game uh, against the Buffalo Sabre, that's the, the first half of a back-to-back, -back and, and we're going to get into it. But Yesterday's show was a blast. If you missed it, uh, you're going to see uh, why that's a bad thing throughout this episode, as the projection model seems to be doing pretty good at, at predicting where money lines should be on just about every game right now. So uh, you got to like that. Um, but in keeping with the theme of the show, I'm going to get started by talking uh, about what I see for Friday's games. The projection model uh, has some value on one of those games. So I I'm still mad at the Devils, right? I I they, they really really burned me uh, against the Florida Panthers. Uh, their overall rating has dropped slightly, but the projection model still sees them as a minus 115 favorite uh, on Friday in Long Island. So um, I like the Devils at even money. That's where they're at at sportsbooks right now. And, uh, and the Devils are a good bet um, at, at even money. 1.3 unit play for me. Uh, I would bet them, um, you know, probably... Uh, up to minus 105 uh actually didn't have a chance to go over my cutoff for this one sort of got lost on that but at even money uh 1.3 units so you can do a little bit of estimating yourself here um you know if it was minus 105 
definitely would not risk 1.3 units. Uh, I would risk a little more than that, maybe 1.05 units to win one unit, something like that, but not 1.3 units. So um, as the, the line gets worse or, or further away from where I like it at, uh, I'll reduce my stake. So keep that in mind, um, you know, throughout the show and, and throughout the season when I'm talking about things, but I will try to provide my cutoffs as much as possible. Just a lot to get to uh, today on Thursday show. I know we covered a lot of it on Wednesday's show, but I've locked the devils in at even money, 1.3 unit bet. Uh, last year, they played the Islanders in March, in late March, uh, around the 26th, I believe. Uh, they met in Long Island, and the Devils closed as a minus 125 favorite. So at first blush, I think the, the projection model is pretty reasonable here uh, with minus 115 uh, as the Devils projected odds. So nothing of note to talk about uh, on the, the, the other game that, that's going to be happening on Friday. The Flames and the Blue Jackets expect Jacob Markstrom to get the start. But let's look at the projections, shall we, while we get into uh, Thursday's slate. The, the Calgary Flames and the Buffalo Sabres. Flames back up. Uh, Dan Vladar will start as expected. While it looks like Devin Levi, I wasn't sure if Levi was going to be back in. It looks like he's going to be between the pipes for Buffalo. The projection model has the Flames listed as minus 101 favorites, giving them a 50% chance of winning. But surprisingly, I, I've seen the odds start to shift uh, toward Calgary. You've got Calgary now at minus 125 um, at, at, at bet 365 currently. Uh, I'm interested in the Sabres at plus 110 or better. So if anything, it's going to be Buffalo or nothing for me. Obviously, I want Devin Levi in goal. It looks like that's going to be in uh, the case here. Um, so if the Sabres get up around plus 110, which I think they might be at some shops right now, but things are, are moving pretty quick. Um, that's that's going to be a bet that I'll, I'll probably consider here. So Sabres plus 110 is something to keep an eye on. Um, that's not one that I had my my eye on on, on Wednesday. So uh, some changes there as things opened up at minus 110 on each side, but have started to shift toward the Calgary Flames. One of the bets that I did have uh, on Wednesday's show for Thursday's games, Toronto and Florida. This opened up at a pick em. Uh, that's when each side is listed at minus 110, e indicating a 50-50 matchup. Um, I disagreed with that. The projection model had the Maple Leafs winning the game almost 55% of the time, 54.8% of the time. That converts to minus 121 uh, money line odds, as you see right there. So that means the, the Panthers should be plus 121. Uh, that, that meant the Maple Leafs were a really good bet uh, at, at minus 110. And that's why I've got the jersey on today. I've got to, I gotta, you know, create some good vibes here. I know my family, who, who mostly consists of, of Boston Bruins, Montreal Canadiens, and, and Edmonton Oilers fans are going to disown me. But I need the Leafs to get a big, big win here uh, against the, the Florida Panthers, a rematch from round two uh, last season. So Toronto, though, is now minus 135 on the money line. Good bet, right? Win or lose, I'm going to grade this one as a good bet uh, if that holds up. I, I, I got the Leafs at around minus 110. Um, they're no longer a good bet at minus 135. No way, right? So I'll say it again. Bet numbers, not teams. Nashville at the Rangers. Money has come in on the Predators here, likely due to the assumption that, that Jonathan Quick might get his first start as a member of the Rangers. Otherwise, I don't really get it because, you know, Nashville, they've got some potential to be a fringe playoff team maybe. Of course, UC Saros could, could get them in. Um, but but I don't see them anything more than that and, and th as anything more than that. And the, the projection model gives them just a 32.5% chance of beating the Rangers at MSG if Igor Shesterkin is in goal. Now, if Jonathan Quick is in the crease, the Rangers' chances of winning drop from almost 68% down around 61%, uh, assuming Yus Saros is in goal for the Predators after being pulled in the first period of their game against the Oilers earlier this week. But... Uh, if Shesterkin is in, yeah, having the Rangers at, at minus 185, which is where um, actually they've just moved live on the screen here. I just saw, uh, just caught that now. Rangers up to minus 200. So um, Shesterkin was the first goaltender off the ice uh, at practice on Wednesday. That's usually a good indication that he'll start the next game. Uh, I've learned not to put a whole lot of stock into that because, you know, these reporters sometimes jump the gun. Um, and maybe don't ask the questions they should be asking uh, in, in times like this. But uh, it does look like Shesterkin is going to uh, to start. Unfortunately, the Rangers, they were down around minus 185 just about, uh, you know, a few minutes before I started recording here. And uh, now they're moved up to minus 200 at bet 365. That's about where I, I think they should be. 
um, as I've got them at minus 208, not enough value to bet minus 200. There certainly would have been at minus 185. So I guess that's one reason why, um, you know, you, you should be staying on top of the news uh, each and every morning with the NHL uh, practices and morning skates going on. But nothing on the Rangers now at minus 200. Uh, Edmonton at Philadelphia, same goes for the Oilers uh, and Philly. Like the Oilers are listed as a minus two favorite. Uh, minus 210 favorite right now at bet 365. Um, and that's shorter than than what the projection model has uh, at minus 225. Jack Campbell is going to be in gold, it looks like. I was waiting for that before I, I started to consider a bet on the Oilers. Carter Hart is is expected to start in goal. Um, he's from the the Edmonton area. And, and by the way, everything makes sense about Carter Hart when you remember he's from Sherwood Park, not a, a compliment at all. Anyway, Betway, they were offering minus 190 on the Oilers here. Strong bet. I just don't think the market is as confident in the Oilers or their goaltenders as as I am. So I'm going to lock in Edmonton probably at around minus 190 if I can after I'm, I'm done here. Um, I'm just waiting for the market to settle. I'll let you guys know on, on Twitter uh, when I add that one because I think I am going to add Edmonton minus 190 to win one unit. But uh, like I said, I'm going to wait till the market settles here. It, it, it moved against me um, after Jack Campbell was announced in goal uh, against the Predators. I don't want that to happen again. I want to make sure that I get the best number possible uh, on the Oilers. Vancouver, their underlying metrics uh, are about as bad as Tampa Bay's, but they've got a great starting goaltender and a, a quality backup too. And that's that's more than the Lightning can say right now. They've got two plugs in goal. Jonas Johansson, Matt Tompkins, although... The latter, he might have some potential based on what I've seen and heard from people who have followed his career uh, more closely than I have. Still, goaltending, a big reason why I bet on the Canucks to beat the Lightning at plus 132 on Wednesday's show. The Canucks are plus 115 underdogs now, though. Uh, plus 110 moving uh, at bet 365. So that one just moved uh, in the last couple of minutes. Uh, the projection model had Vancouver listed at plus 120. So at plus 115, betting on the Canucks would actually mean that's a bet with negative expect, expected value. And I'm only looking to make bets that I think have positive expected value. So not a good bet anymore. One more reason why you want to listen to the puck portfolio, get a head start uh, on each day's handicapping. But yeah, it does look like Steven Samkos. He missed the last two games. It's going to look like he's back in the lineup today. He told reporters that, that he feels good and the plan is for him to be in the lineup on Thursday. But, you know, I had already factored that in a bit. Samkos injury didn't seem all that serious. So uh, it sounded like he would be back in, in relatively short order. Um, and the way I handicapped this game, I, I did so kind of with the thought that, you know, how, how would, it, would I like to bet the Canucks if it was the worst case scenario, if Stamkos was in, um, if if this Smith was in goal, if Matt Tompkins was in goal for the Lightning. Um, so when I when I handicapped this game, that's what I did. And that's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. Uh, and I'll be comfortable with the Canucks, regardless of what happens uh, with my current position uh, at plus 132. But I, 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 like I said, bet numbers, not teams. The Canucks are no longer a good bet at plus 110 or plus 115 or anything like that. Uh, Minnesota hosting the Los Angeles Kings. Marc-Andre Fleury will start versus the Kings on Thursday. I had originally uh, projected Gustafin, Gustafson and Fleury, uh, had them listed at 50-50 to start. So the projection model sat at minus 104 in favor of Minnesota with a little bit of a chance that, that Gustafson would be in goal. But now that Fleury is confirmed, the projection model has the Wild at plus 101. So... Not all that interesting from a betting perspective because this one is currently listed as a pick of minus 110 on each side. But, oh man, the Coyotes, they, they got to get it done tonight, right? My biggest bet on uh, Wednesday for Thursday's games uh, was the Coyotes. And the odds, once again, have moved significantly in, in my direction, the Arizona Coyotes direction, since I, I recommended that bet on yesterday's show. So if you're keeping count... That's three money line bets. They all have accumulated significant closing line value for Thursday's games. And if that holds up the puck drops, I mean, uh, until puck drop, I'm going to grade those bets as good bets, whether they win or lose. Pavel Butchnevich, he's been ruled out for the Blues. That's a big loss. The projection model sees the Coyotes as a plus 120 underdog. They're sitting at even money, plus 100 
uh, at bet 365. Not too sure who will start in goal. Uh, it could be Joel Hopper uh, instead of Jordan Biddington. There might be another move in the Coyotes' direction if that happens, but I think the value is gone either way. You've got to watch the puck portfolio to get down on these games early. Uh, that's 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 the message that I'm trying to, trying to send here. So the projection model on point uh, for Thursday's games, it seems. Um, but there, you know, still some possibility that I'll end up on something else. Like I said, I'm, I'm considering the Oilers pretty strongly here. Uh, Vegas at Winnipeg. Laurent Francois told reporters that he will be starting against his former club, the Vegas Golden Knights, on Thursday. And we learned that Gabriel Velarde is going to miss four to six weeks. Tough break for a young player who has had some... Uh, terrible injury luck to start his career. Still no word on Alex Petrangelo, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights defenseman, though. If Petrangelo is out, the model has the Golden Knights listed as minus 119 favorites. If he's in the lineup, that will move to around minus 130, give or take a few cents, depending on the status of Alec Martinez, who we don't know uh, if he'll be uh, suiting up uh, for Thursday's game. So maybe a play on the Vegas Golden Knights at minus 115 or better, but nothing official right now because i don't think there will be enough value if petrangelo uh, is not in the lineup and logan thompson starts in goal speaking of, of petrangelo I, i've got to stop including his names i just had to say that name three times in a row and it's so hard to say for me uh, i don't know what it is but it's a very hard name for me to pronounce so i'm going to try to avoid having to, to say alex petrangelo's name but anyway aiden hill he looked great this season so i'm looking for him to start and oh my god it, again Petrangelo to be back in the lineup before I make a bet on the Vegas Golden Knights here. I won't be considering a bet on Winnipeg either way, though. So when it comes to Dallas and Anaheim, that's another game that we've got coming up later this evening. I guess the biggest thing to watch out for is whether Scott Wedgwood will make his first start of the season. The projection model has the, the stars listed at minus 232 on the money line if Ottinger is in goal, but... Even if Wedgwood starts, I don't think there's going to be value on the, the Ducks here. They're not going to be a great bet at plus 215. Maybe a little bit of value, but uh, with that said, I'm, I almost certainly will not be betting on Dallas and, and hopefully not on Anaheim here. Um, I know they got that big win over the Hurricanes, but I just don't have a lot of love for this team. Uh, not the type of team that I think has uh, any kind of staying power in the league right now. So Carolina at Seattle, another game that had a lot of intrigue. Uh, on Wednesday's show because the projection model had the Carolina Hurricanes listed as a minus 153 favorite, as you can see on the screen. That was if Sebastian Ajo and Frederick Anderson are in, but however, it, it does look like Anderson might not be in because the Hurricanes called up Kachekov. Uh, it looks like Anderson will remain out due to that. Uh, I'm still not sure on Ajo's status. If he's in, I, I think the Hurricanes' odds should be around minus 145. So if you grabbed minus 132 yesterday, I know some of you did, uh, it might very well be a good bet. I did not make that bet. Like I said, I was not locking it in. I was going to wait. Um, but at this point, though, it, it, might, it looks like I might not be able to lock that one in because... I don't think there should be any incentive uh, at minus 145 to gamble on whether Ajo will play or not. Uh, Carolina's odds are sitting at minus 145 right now. Um, and, and I just don't think that there's enough incentive. At minus 132, there's there's some incentive. Um, because even if you're wrong and Ajo doesn't play, uh, it's not going to be a terrible bet. It, I think if you take minus 145 uh, on Carolina against Seattle, Carolina has not looked great here to start the season. I think they'll be one of the best teams in the league, not worried about them at all. But they've looked um, a little off here to start the season. So that's something to, to think about, too. And like I said, at this point, minus 145, not the time I'm going to gamble and say like, oh, maybe Ajo will play because that's exactly kind of where I think the line should be. So that's something to keep in mind here as you uh, as you get in to handicapping this one. Uh, of course, the Hurricanes kind of moved um, just with the speculation that we'll see uh, Ajo back in the lineup because I, I think it was a little bit of load management. I guess we'll, we'll wait and see if that was the case. Chicago or Colorado, I said on Wednesday's show, it's Chicago or nothing for me, um, but n nothing at this price, right? The projection model has the Blackhawks listed at plus 270. Bet 365 uh, currently has the Blackhawks at plus 275. I'd be looking for something like plus 290 in that range before I'd consider a bet on the Hawks, though, because, uh, and even still, it would be a, a very tiny bet, not looking to fade the Avalanche here on this one, really. So uh, last up, one last game to talk about before I wrap up 
Thursday's show. I'll be back on Friday, of course, to preview all of Saturday's games. We'll 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 touch on Friday's games as well, but we already we already touched on those games today. You know, I've got a bet locked in on the New Jersey Devils. But Capo Kakinen is going to start in goal for the Sharks. The model has the Bruins listed at minus 234. Um, looks like it's closer to, to showing some value on San Jose, who is plus 230 at Bet365 right now. I doubt it will get there. That's a good thing. I don't want to bet San Jose. I probably would just disregard what the model said on that one anyway, because I think the Bruins, like I said yesterday, they've got a really easy schedule. Uh, it's fairly spread out. Lots of lots of easy games outside of their, their one matchup versus the LA Kings. I expect Jeremy Swayman to maybe get the start uh, in goal tonight for Boston. Um, but uh, no play on the Bruins right now. And, and I'm, I'm not anticipating betting on the Bruins until maybe early November because they're going to be just big, big favorites um, all through the month of October, pretty much playing against the, the worst teams in the NHL. So Boston, uh, that's something to keep in mind. If you really do think this Boston team um, is, is going to be something this year, um, you know, in the, the post uh, Patrice Bergeron area era, well, um, you know, maybe, maybe you want to look at the projected standings um, it looks like I've got Boston with a 31% chance of winning the Atlantic division. Um, so something to, uh, maybe, maybe look at there. I'm not sure where Boston's odds are, uh, to win the Atlantic right now, but you know, they could be looking, uh, pretty good by the end of the month, just because of their easy schedule. Things could get tougher. I expect them to get tougher. I expect Boston to struggle a little bit here, but, uh, right now the Bruins, um, you know, they're looking pretty good and they've got an easy run of games here to make up some points in the standing. So that's it for Thursday's episode of the Puck Portfolio. Once again, if you have not subscribed already, please do so. Help us get over that 1,000 subscriber milestone. It would really be awesome to hit that before the end of the week. But uh, hey, if we got to wait till next week, I guess we will. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again on Friday with a big preview of Saturday's NHL slate.